Mary was a 62-year-old woman who was dealing with swelling in her left knee. She was having pain nearly every day. She could only be on her feet for around about 10, 15 minutes before she felt like she needed to sit down. And we helped her go from this irritated, inflamed state to being able to walk more than a mile every day within a short time frame, just three months. Mary's our case study that you can download for free. I've got a, a digital version of this so you can go to our website or check the link in the description below and you can get all the details. I'm gonna give you some more details here, but you can, you can look at them yourself. And what Mary had to deal with was a very typical situation that most people who have bone-on-bone -bone arthritis have. She was given that diagnosis. She went to the doctor, had the x-ray. They said that her knee was bone-on-bone, -bone, meaning that the bones of the thigh and the shin, those two bones, were touching each other. And that's usually a, a milestone or, or a, a landmark finding that doctors will use to give patients uh, of the treatment of a knee replacement, a joint replacement surgery. Um, so Mary did not want to have that. I don't think anybody ever does unless it's extremely bad and they're like, just, just cut it off now. But Mary wasn't in that at that point. She just, she knew it hurt, but she had this gut feeling in her, inside of her that it could get better. She tried doing exercises and stretches. Actually, her doctor sent her to physical therapy. And something you need to know is that there's different kinds of physical therapists out there. There's there's physical therapists that work with people that are recovering from surgery, and then there's other physical therapists like myself that can help people avoid surgery. And it's not clear which ones are out there, but I'll tell you how you can find them. She was referred to a physical therapy clinic that was associated with her surgeon's office. So they had the same name. Uh, they weren't in the same building, but they had the same name. And uh, so the surgeon was like, go to our physical therapist. And while there, she saw a lot of patients around her who were there because they had a surgery of some sort. Sometimes it was a knee surgery, sometimes it was a hip surgery, um, but they're not gonna turn you away at most physical therapy clinics, especially if the doctor sent you in. Um, so she went through treatment there and after a few weeks of treatment, she realized that she wasn't getting better. She was actually getting worse. Her knee was hurting more it was swelling more and it just didn't settle well with her. And she had an injection along the way, a cortisone shot for pain. It didn't help like she hoped. She tried every exercise that they gave her. She was diligent about it. She did the stretches they told her to do, but she was not getting better. And so the physical therapist told her, go back to the surgeon. This isn't working out. This is a very common thing that happens. If you don't respond to treatment the way that they expect you to, then they send you back. They punt you away to the surgeon because they're supposed to be the, the, the top of the medical chain. They're supposed to know what to do with you next. Um, and, and so they, that's, that's what they're supposed to do, especially if you're a physical therapist that works with a surgeon. You're, you're supposed to do that. But anyways, um, she went back to the surgeon. The surgeon told her, let's go ahead and sign you up for a knee replacement. Now, Mary had pretty good motion in both knees. She could bend both knees about the same. Yeah, it hurt and it was swollen and, and she couldn't walk around as much as she wanted to. She was missing out time with her family. She couldn't go on walks like she likes to do. But um, she kept researching. She ended up getting, making an appointment with the surgeon. She was researching, though, ahead of time, uh, what else could she do? And so in her research, she came across our channel, the El Paso Manual Physical Therapy, and came across videos about how to help knee arthritis, how to, even if you have bone on bone knee arthritis, that's what I talk about all the time. Um, and she started to do some of our exercises, found that it was helpful, and then started to come in for treatment. Now, I didn't see her myself, my therapist saw her, and all my therapists here follow the same treatment approach that I have developed and implemented here in this clinic. And, um, and she got better, week to week she got better. And just some highlights that I wanna give you, by week one, she figured out that she wasn't able to activate her glutes. This is huge. Like, think about it. She was in physical therapy for a few weeks. She saw a surgeon. She was trying stuff out on her own prior to that. She'd been having knee problems for a decade before that. She had a meniscus injury, and then eventually she got arthritis, very common pathway. But she could never activate her glutes. She was never even aware that her glutes weren't active. Nobody told her this because it's not common knowledge, even in the healthcare field. So that's what we started her out with right away is 
let's get your glutes to activate because if you can get that milestone under your belt, if you can make sure that your glutes are active when you tell them to without other muscles compensating, then you're able to do other exercises that can progress you out of having knee arthritis flare-ups all the time. Um, by week four, she was doing mini squats. So not a full-on de full depth squat like butt to heels, but slightly bending her knees while being constrained to using her glutes. That's a big deal. It wasn't painful for her at this point. By week five, she was no longer waking up stiff in the mornings. That was huge because every morning was a battle for her to stiffly walk over to the bathroom and you know, take care of business, do things around the house. She could, she, she was always stiff, but all of a sudden, week, five weeks in, she's feeling more normal. By week seven, she overdid it. Um, she went on a, she was walking a lot by this point. She started to walk in the mornings and she really enjoyed her walk one day and just overdid it walking and flared up her knee. But she recovered within a couple of days, whereas before it would take her a week or two to recover. So that was a huge win. And then she was right back on track. She didn't really lose a beat, skip any steps after that. Um, week 10, she was walking 30 minutes every morning and doing 100 mini squats through the day. So like 10 reps, 20 reps at a time throughout the day. Both of those things were happening just about every day for her. By week 12, three months in, right when we saw her for her last visit, she was doing weighted squats with 10 pounds in her hands. Think about this. This poor woman, Mary, and I, and I say Mary, it's not her name. I'm, I'm hiding her name because I want to protect all, her and any healthcare professional she worked with. But um, Mary couldn't even be on her feet for long. She was having pain almost every day. She was swelling in her knees. She went from doing that to walking 30 minutes. She was covering almost two miles every day, plus doing weighted squats. Weighted squats for somebody who had bone-on-bone -bone knee arthritis. Mary felt fantastic. She did not need a knee replacement surgery. She never got it done. Uh, we've kept in touch with her. That's how we got all the details for the story and for that you can download. And you know what we've done? She, we got her permission. Of course, we, she didn't want to share her name, which is completely understandable. Um, but we have documented the treatments that we've done here. There's 12 treatments once a week that we did with Mary. They're all in this PDF download. Um, the treatments that we did by hand, the exercises that we did, her responses are in here, background story about her. If you want to see exactly what we did to help Mary's bone-on-bone -bone knee arthritis, go get this, download it right now, and you'll see everything. It's a 33-page document, so it's a little thick, um, but well worth the read if you're considering having a knee replacement surgery.